Welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another Thursday episode with me. I can't imagine how little you have going on in your life if you want to spend your Thursday morning with me, but hey, I appreciate it. And at least we're spending it together. Today's a little bit of a different video. If you watched Bunk Bed Breakdowns, the channel that Mike and I used to have, I did these videos a few times. It's a little more out there and creative. It's going to probably be a short video, but I think one that hopefully you guys enjoy. So without further ado, let's hit the intro. So as all, ooh, ooh. So as we all know, the combine went down about a week ago, exactly a week ago from the time this video is being recorded. And at the combine, people run, people jump. Some people, like maybe this guy we're gonna talk about, walk the 40 yard dash. We're gonna start this little blind resume with a guy who participated in the combine and is a rookie prospect going into this year so let's kick off the profile with their 40 yard dash time this wide receiver ran slower than a 4.6 in the 40 yard dash probably makes you not want to draft them in your rookie drafts probably makes you a little iffy and shy away from this player that's fair another part of this blind resume point number two is this player shared the field with at least two other NFL players currently in the NFL they played together in college they got drafted day two one of them the other one got drafted day four but shared the field with two NFL players at the time their perspective now they're current NFL players point number three this wide receiver averaged under 13 yards per catch so between their 40 yard dash time and the yards per reception you're probably thinking damn this guy's slow and this guy's probably a slot receiver who I don't really want but this player was productive, had a 94th percentile breakout age at the age of 18 years old while playing in a Power 5 conference and sharing the field with those aforementioned NFL players. So despite not being extremely explosive or fast or breaking off big plays, this player was productive and productive at a young age, especially relative to competition. 94th percentile is no joke and the last two points which should be more feathers in this player's cap is he is an early declare currently a junior in college entering the nfl we like to see that three years in college showed out early produced early so we know that they at least have the talent going into the league despite maybe not having the best athletic profile and lastly this player seems to be a day two pick again it's all perspective so we do not know if it's a fact that they're going to be a round two or round three pick. But it seems as though his pedigree, his production, and I guess that's really it, maybe his name, is going to help land him in day two of the NFL draft. So what we have, I'm not sure if I'm going to remember all of it, Power 5 played with other people who are currently in the NFL. 90th plus percentile breakout age. Pretty slow, ran a 4-6. Junior declare under 13 yards of reception, and maybe a day two pick. Put it down below who you think this player is. I'm sure you guys can guess, but there may be a twist. M. Nate Shyamalan in this bitch. Let's hit the little cutscene. Who's that wide receiver? It's David Bell or Keenan Allen. Okay, so this video was probably really boring for you. Blind resumes are kind of lame, especially when the graphics aren't necessarily there, but it was less so for me to paint a blind resume of David Bell and more so to draw a comparison of Keenan Allen because these guys have very, very, very similar profiles going from college to the NFL. Obviously, Keenan Allen may have had some bumps along the road. Apparently, he was hurt during his athletic testing. He was more versatile in college being used out of the backfield. But overall, everything that I named for David Bell happened and was the case for Keenan Allen. I talk about a 4.6 40-yard dash, David Bell 4.65, Keenan Allen 4.71. So both not the fastest guys. Again, Keenan Allen may have been a bit slower because of an injury, 
but we know him in the NFL. He's not busting off 90, 80, 70, 60 yard receptions. He's not a fast dude, but he is real shifty. He does have that agility, which David Bell, I believe, didn't show, but like nobody did well in the three cone drill. So that's the same. We talk about the 13 yards per reception, that being the peak. David Bell was at 12.8, Keenan Allen at 12.9. So both around the 25th percentile for all wide receivers. So although Keenan Allen was more versatile, it's not like he was busting off many more big plays than David Bell was in college. And that could come down to the role, right? Being a slot receiver. Maybe if Keenan Allen's used as more of a vertical threat in college, which he probably should have or could have been, uh, he would have been more productive and had a high yards per reception number. Then again, the same could be said for David Bell. Both Power 5 schools, Keenan Allen obviously went to UCAL or Cal Berkeley, whatever. That is in the Pac-12. David Bell is in the Big Ten at Purdue. Talking about college teammates, David Bell played with Rondell Moore, who's a very good receiver. Although Rondell Moore did get banged up in the season that they played together, he was still pretty productive in the games they shared a field. I believe he averaged over 60 uh, receiving yards per game. So not too bad of a number. He also shared the field with Bryson Hopkins, whereas Keaton Allen on the flip side played with Marvin Jones Jr. and Shane Vereen. Sure, you could say that Shane Vereen and Marvin Jones are the better bunch of the t- college teammates that made it to the NFL, but we don't know what Rondell Moore is as of yet. Breakout age. Keenan Allen actually had an 18.4 year age, whatever the fuck it was, like 18.4. So he's probably like almost 18 and a half years old, um, like six months. So he was in the 97th percentile, I believe, whereas David Bell was in the 94th percentile. So both broke out extremely early. When it comes to size, that's the only real difference. Keenan Allen stands at 6'2", 205, 206. David Bell, 6'1", 212, so he is a little bit bigger. So his speed score does look a lot more impressive than what Keenan Allen's was. I'm not saying he's a faster player because the 40-yard dash, especially this year, is always wonky and it doesn't translate to game speed. But when you watch David Bell on the field, he is a shifty dude. He does invite contact a little bit and he breaks free of tackle. So even if he's not a burner, he is somebody who can get shifty, who can break some decently big plays by way of yards after the catch and i'll have a video coming out later this week where i talk about his comparison obviously Keenan allen's a super lofty one but there are other players in the league who have succeeded despite a poor athletic profile who share very similar similarities that's just terrible fucking wording what else what else oh also junior declare Keenan allen came out as a junior he had a down season his junior year which made him become a day two pick where he could have snuck into maybe day one or maybe round two he was a round three pick david bell also going into the nfl after his junior year the only other thing aside from size that we are not sure of is the fact that he has not been drafted yet so we don't know if he's a day two pick but when it comes down to it right i'm not saying david bell is the next keenan allen all i'm saying is there's been a ton of nfl players with really good analytical profiles, really good college production, really good just overall prospect profiles. And their athletic testing makes you think, damn, I'd rather have a Denzel Mims, or like obviously he's not in this class, but like a Kevin White, a Denzel Mims, uh, maybe in this class like a Christian Watson, over a guy like David Bell, because they didn't run fast in the 40, because they didn't jump high in the vertical, because their broad jump wasn't all that impressive, and their three cone was a little slow. I'm not saying you should pick him over Christian Watson. I'm not saying you should pick him over like a Calvin Austin or a Bo Melton or any of these guys, but you have to take a step back and realize, hey, he was athletic enough to produce in a Power 5 conference, was really good after the catch, was really good at the catch point, is a really good receiver. Sometimes you don't have to think too hard. You don't have to make him a third-round rookie pick because everything other than what he did in spandex looked really fucking good. And that was the case for Keenan Allen. That was the case for a guy like Jarvis Landry. That was the case for a guy like Amon Ross St. Brown as recent as 2021. So this extends beyond David Bell. This extends to other prospects who might not have had the best time in the underwear Olympics. <clears throat> Justin Ross, I think he ran like a 4.9. That's ridiculous. I could probably run a 4.9 right now. But just look beyond that. Don't draft a guy solely because of athleticism and don't pass it up on a guy solely because he's like a 40th percentile athlete. 40th percentile athletes turn into Cooper Cup and Devontae Adams and other elite, elite fantasy wide receivers. So thought this would be a little bit of a different 
fun video, quick video, one that can engage you guys in the comments. Maybe you guys can ask questions on who I like in the rookie class who may not have had the best combine or guys who had really good combines on my thought, my thoughts on them. So that's it for today. We'll have a video for you Saturday, another lighthearted one, another quick one for you guys to digest. Hopefully you're having a good Thursday morning and I'll see you soon. Peace. Hey!